Good evening. evening. Happy Happy New Year. Thank you. It is an opportunity that we have as we stand on the verge of 2021 that we look back at what 2020 is, not in a way that says, boy, I wish, or boy, what happened, but in a way that reminds us that we are worshiping our God for what we have in 2020 and what we are looking forward to in 2021. With that special gift of looking ahead and looking behind, we also have the comfort that God has given to us in the sacraments and in His Word to guide us in that worship this evening. Our order of service will be common service. We'll have communion as well, Uh, basically page 15 and following with a few minor adjustments. We'll begin our service with our opening hymn, and that's hymn 72, O Lord, our Father, thanks and praise. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us.
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, before whom all generations rise and fall, teach us to think earnestly on the brevity of our lives and on the immensity of your goodness. Help us to enter the new year trusting in the name of your Son and walking in the way of his peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson before us on this eve of the new year is recorded for us in Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to the promises that God makes, the recounting of his goodness to Abraham. How he promises to be with him and he has carried that out in the past he certainly won't change his mind or do something different since it was completely dependent on him anyway. And now Abraham is going to receive that blessing that will be passed down through generations to come. And so we hear God's promises that he does not change and he will be with us. We hear from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me. You who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who gave you birth. When I called him, he was but one, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden." Or wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. The law will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. And my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. This is the word of God. Our psalm this, this evening is Psalm 90. We'll sing this song, the refrains, and join in speaking the responses as they are on the screen. We will use Psalm 90 as the basis or text for our sermon this night. You have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. Like Set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. The length of our days is 70 years or 80, if we have the strength, yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. Us 
us in the morning with your unfailing love. Lesson from God's Word is taken from St. Peter's first letter, chapter 1. The Apostle Peter reminds us of the message that we have, that we have brought into this church, that we have made known through this place, is a message that continues and grows because that is how we live that message. Our lesson from 1 Peter. Through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For... All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. This is the word of God. Our verse of the day. Alleluia! Your word is a lamp to my feet, and a light for my path. Alleluia! Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson comes to us from Luke chapter 13. Listen to how it is that Jesus describes what he is taking care of and what he is doing in this present age. Then he, that is Jesus, told this parable. The man who had a fig tree planted in his had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us now make confession of our faith and we'll use the words of the Nicene Creed. You may be seated. 
We'll continue with our next hymn, hymn 441. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, whew, made it, right? I mean, just I mean, a few more hours anyway, and it's going to be 2021. It's going to be so good to take that 2020 calendar and say, whew, done with that. Now, what are you going to do with 2021? How did your 2020 look? Maybe you've gone through some challenging health issues, or maybe you've felt the pinch of what goes on in our economy when, when things are shut down. 
Maybe you've had challenging issues at home or, or different things with school and such. There are lots of things that we would love to say, well, I can't get, can't get far enough away from 2021. Well, I mean, we carry these around, right? Feels so good to have my arm out of a sling. But is that really what made 2020 its lasting value? What are you looking forward to in 2021? What, what's going to make 2021 any different? And as you start to look at what 2021 brings, how good are you at figuring out what it's going to be? Maybe the lasting value of 2020 is that it's pretty clear we don't have control and can't see that far ahead of what's going to happen in the year to come. Yeah, we would like to have a lot of plans and ideas and things ready for the coming year, but, but how do we know? How can we be sure? Sometimes that gives us a kind of unique perspective as Christians because we have to turn to something. The world around us turns to all kinds of things to make 2020 its, its last year going back in 2021 and, and all the things that we wish we can do. But as Christians, we understand that 2021 is completely in God's hands. In fact, oh God, our help in ages past, we just sang, didn't we? Are we thinking of those words or thinking of the hymn as it went through our minds and through our voices as just a, a pious attitude or a hopeful thoughts? Are there perhaps just maybe uh, that thing that we, we say, well, it's got to be better than last year? If how we determine 2021 is just our attitude or ideas, or it's going to be better anyway, then, then we don't have much reason to celebrate the end of a year, do we? That's just the way it continues to go on. I want you to picture for yourself Moses. I want you to think about what it is that Moses went through in different, his different stages of life. In fact, it's actually kind of neat. He has three divisions, a distinct 40-year slots in his life. We would say that's a lot of time to be spending in any one particular area of life. Even if we've lived a long time, 40 years in the same kind of area is kind of unique. And so Moses, in the first 40 years of his life was living in the luxury of Pharaoh's household. He had something that he didn't devise for himself, something that was brought about by God that took care of him and provided him a safe place until all of a sudden it wasn't. The next 40 years that Moses spent was, was living in what we would say would still be a comfortable existence because he was able to just do his job, tend his, shepherd, tend his sheep for the flock of his father-in-law. 40 years doing something that he was okay good at. What happened then? Did those 40 years in Pharaoh's household and those 40 years taking care of sheep, did that... Did that define the next 40 years at all? We know those last 40 years that Moses spent were years that were spent taking care of a people that God had said, I'm going to watch over them and be with them. But, but they weren't very happy with what go, was going on with Moses and what was going on with God. And yet God chose Moses in the next 40 years, 80 to 120 to lead his people through the desert, up in mountains, with all kinds of enemies. And we would say it was pretty grand and glorious what God did with Moses in the last 40 years of the third of his life. So that's why we want to look at what Moses writes here in Psalm 90. 
We had those responses earlier, but the verses in the whole text is, is, is quite exhaustive. As we look at what Moses is recording and thinking about in Psalm 90, I want you to think about, is this a better picture of what 2020 was? Or is this a better picture of what 2021 will be? And as you think about those words that Moses has for us this evening, I want you to put that trust and that promise in God's promises on where he stands so starting off then with verses 1 to 2. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. It's interesting that Moses starts off with that section, isn't it? He could have recounted the times that the Israelites were uh, complaining, the times the Israelites were even rebelling, and, and the times that God brought his judgment, or the, the place that he was, and all the places that he'd been. Or, or maybe he could have been thinking about his first 40 years, or even the second 40 years. But he starts out saying, Lord, you've been in control of all these generations. You see, God is not restricted to some kind of little sample of what we get in our lifetimes. As the psalmist says, 70 or 80 years if we have the strength. Not too many of us have much more than that, but those that do can say, well, I, I didn't have control. Whether I get 50, or I, whether I get 100, is still in God's hands. And that's what Moses draws to our attention. He's been our dwelling place even before we were on this earth. We need these reminders that God is the one who's still in control. And, and God does do that from time to time, doesn't he? 2020 is a perfect example, a reminder that our health is not completely within our own care. Even if we put our trust in medicine and, and scientists, they still can't catch everything. We don't have to go that far back in the last 20 years to think about all the different ways that God has demonstrated that, that we are not in control of even what happened in 9-11 or hurricanes or fires, or, or shootings. Does God not give us this reminder again and again that we are not in control? And so with verses 1 and 2, we have to acknowledge that we are serving a God who has been around longer than we have. Who has a plan that he has worked out since the beginning of time. Not so that we can have this nice easy life or that, that we can make sure that this payment's made. Or, or we have this much time in our life where we get to enjoy these good things. But God who has have it all under control has picked out you. And picked out me. And even as he brings us together as a congregation. This is not happenstance. This isn't a, well, 2020 was a dud. Let's move on to 2021. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And that is where we stand. And Moses uses that to actually set some, some pretty harsh terms for us. Some things that we don't often like to remember or think about as he spells out in verses 3 to 11. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. Before we start to think of ourselves as the most important people or things on this earth, Remember who it is that we are standing before. That is God himself. I 
Am I going to make such an impact in my life because I'm doing so much good or maybe so much bad that, that people for generations and generations are going to know my name? Even that doesn't compare to a thousand years, does it? The God who created everything has now chosen this moment and this time to remind us that we are the created ones, not the Creator. So as Moses thinks about all the ways that God shows His power and shows His control, he says, We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. And there it is. There is the real way we approach and stand before our God. Not with all my I hope to do's or my good deeds of the past 2020. Not the, the life that I've built up that looks fairly good compared to others. But all the things that I do that, that I know God hates. All the things that make me look like a miserable human being. Sometimes things that even my own family does not even know. Boy, I wish 2020 would just be that simple day that I could flip the back. I wish I could remove all of those things that I've done in the past year that haven't been exactly what God has wanted. In fact, all those things that I, that I held for myself. They kept from God's people. That I shied away from or, or hid from or, or, or lashed out at. That's what God sees. This doesn't make 2021 look any better, does it? How far am I going to get in 2021 before I feel even the same way? God doesn't say that he just, you know, looks the other way as we sin. He says, I see exactly what you're doing. And when we face 2021 with an idea that we've got things in control or that we're going to do better in 2021 than we did in the past or that I'm at least better than somebody else, then, then we better look again at those verses. They don't carry any weight with the God, the creator of the universe, do they? Before we look at dread at 2021 and start to consider maybe perhaps it's not going to be any better than 2020 or whatever it's going to be. Gain an understanding from verse 12. Teach us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You see, God has the right understanding of our lives. Only through Him do we find peace and comfort in any way the world is going to turn out, whether we step one day into 2021 or make it all the way through. Don't take your place standing in the judgment of God. This is what I expect. This is what I want. This is what it should be, God. And boy, this is not going the way I want it to. Instead, seek His wisdom. What He shows us is that we need Him in 2021. We need Him because He is the one who controls and guides all things. But more important that He knows how miserable 2020 is going, has been. And how miserable our lives have been in the light of His Word. And yet, what does He do? He calls you by name. He calls you by name and, and sprinkles the water over your head. And puts his name on you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
And when he does that, he makes you a child of his because what he did was take all of your sins and put them on his own son. So that by your baptism you are brought to be washed completely of your sins that they no longer can hold you to 2020 or no longer take you into 2021. It's really as though the new calendar page is flipped. Because we recall God's wisdom to take His Son and put Him in our place so that He would pay for our sins on the cross. See, now we have that perspective that says this is where we are set apart for 2021. We're not trying to eke out our existence. We're living in God's grace. Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. You see, the one who didn't skip over or pass over those difficult or challenging days on his life on this earth is the one who says, I'm going to be with you, whatever this might bring. He put himself into our weak and grass-like lives. So that the comfort of this message doesn't just last for how many days we have breath. But that it lasts For ages and ages and ages. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. See, we take that message with us into 2021. Not how how miserable 2020 was. Not how many things didn't work out our way or, or perhaps maybe they did. But we have a God that goes with us into 2021. And he has a message that reminds us that we are his children. Make us glad. That we may sing. Satisfy us. All those pictures are are what we do and, and live as Christians because 2020 carries into 2021 and God takes care of us. And so we close this year, not with pious thoughts of what 2021 is going to bring, not for a hope of a a brand new year and nothing, nothing like 2020, but God's promise and His blessing. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. See, those verses aren't up to us. They're not dependent on how well we took care of 2020. They're not dependent on how well we went out through flying colors or perhaps even all the different things that we have gotten in our Christmas presents. Our God has been our help in ages past. He promises to be with us in the future. Amen. Please stand. Repeat that last verse again. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. And out of response of hearing the message from God's word, we sing, Create in Me.
We now go to our Lord in prayer. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. It is fitting, O Lord, in the final hours of this year, to express our gratitude for the countless gifts of grace we have received from you. You clothe your creation with beauty. You feed even the birds and tell us that we are much more valuable than they. Clothing and food, safety and health, possessions and money, even life itself, all these come to us from your generous hand. We thank you especially for your word and holy supper, which strengthen our faith, shield us from temptation, and equip us for service. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Almighty and eternal God, you have been gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. As you led your people Israel with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, so lead us by the light of your word that we may live our lives to your glory and be prepared to die in your peace. Yes. Now, Lord, hear us as we pray boldly and confidently as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the wonder and mystery of his birth you have opened our eyes to the glory of your grace and renewed in our hearts the fervor of your love. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he gave it thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Congregation may be seated. We'll practice as we have been, continuous flow for distribution. Lord's Supper is prepared. This true body and blood of your Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith till life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand as we now sing our praise to our God, and we do so with the song of Simeon. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. O oh God, the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn, Hymn 75.
Glad that you're able to join us for these final hours of this year of 2020. And it is a reminder that our God, who has been our help in ages past, will certainly be with us in the future. And that promise that He is beyond us also brings us hope, even as we start to think about what we're going to do or what the next year is going to bring. May God continue to bless you, and bless you especially in the new year. Uh, just uh, keep your attention on a couple opportunities for Bible class. Uh, we are going to continue our adult Bible class going. Um, so we have going to, we're going to be starting a study of the book of Revelation, focusing in on the first three chapters. Our sermons in the upcoming Sundays, all the way up through Epiphany before we start Lent, are going to be tying into each of the churches that are met, mentioned in, in uh, Revelations chapter 2 and 3. So uh, that'll be a good way to tie Bible class and our sermons together, so please join us. Sunday school, though, is one more week off, and so they'll start up on January 10th. Lord's blessings on the new year.